Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I've been wanting to make this tutorial for a long time now. It's my personal character modeling tutorial. It's the way I like to model characters. Um, so let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna make a new scene. And uh, what the first thing I wanna do is create a, uh, a reference object for scale. So one thing that's really important with, with creating characters is that you get your scale right first. So I just make a cube. Set my pivot on the bottom, just hold the D and V and then middle drag the pivot to the bottom there. If I hold X, I can move it up and snap it here. Now I'm going to be working in decimeters. It's just easier to work in decimeters for my, for me. If you want to work in centimeters, then all your, your scale is going to be just a little bigger. So a, uh, a six foot uh, person is about 182 centimeters. So decimeters, it's, it's 18.2 uh, decimeters. So one uh, centimeters, uh, I mean, uh, one decimeter is 10 centimeters. So this is our scale. I'm just gonna make a quick um, layer here and add this cube to that layer and set it to T for template. Now, what I need to do is create my image planes. So I downloaded uh, these character sheets that I found. I don't know the artist, I couldn't find who the original artist is, so I can't really attribute it. But if anybody knows, they can post it in the comments. And all I need to do is go to the side view and click the image plane icon, which is right here. And then I just need to navigate to my image planes. So I have, uh, the original image planes look like this. Uh, they're just uh, uh, like a grayscale uh, drawing, but I took it into Photoshop and I just used the uh, one of the channels, the red channel and made a transparent PNG. And this lets you see through the uh, image inside Maya. You don't have to do this, you can just use the original one, but I just chose this one. Bring it in, and then I'm gonna do the same on the front view. So, same thing. Now what's nice about having transparent image planes is you can see through them, like that. And again, in order to make them, you just go into uh, Photoshop and uh, you can do it there. So, all I need to do now is line up uh, I selected both image planes. I'm going to line them up with mo move them only in Y and line them up with the bottom of the feet like this and then the top of the head. So if I want to make a six, uh, six foot character, that's what I'll do. But if I want to make them slightly shorter, uh, I'm just going to make them slightly shorter. That. And then just get close here, line this up with the grid. So if I bring the grid back, you can see he's standing on the ground. And having this cube here is really helpful for lining up. You can then delete the layer and delete the cube it's just there for reference. Uh, now what I need to do is figure out where to place these image planes because I want them to be far away from the origin, but I still want to be able to uh, see them in my other view. So I'm just going to move them this way and then look in, uh, in both views, the side view and the front view uh, to see if in the right location to see if it's in the right location. So the way uh, I'm going to do this is I'm going to place a cube like this and I want to make sure that my image plane is behind the cube. If it's in the wrong spot, you move it over. So if you see it like this, you want to move it back. Uh, now you can have two versions. You can have one in front, one in back. I just like to work with all of my image planes in the back and that's fine. I can delete this now. So everything is set up now and uh, we can start. Uh, so I need to actually also line this up so that the front view I'm looking at the front and then the side view I'm looking at the side. But I also want the side to be facing forward. And if I look down here, you see my the Z arrow on the bottom here, the blue one is pointing to the left. So I need to take this image plane and rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, or it's 180, but it's instead of having a 90 rotation in Y here, I need it to be negative 90, like that. And then I can line this up and place some. Uh, I like to line it up so that the neck and torso are more or less centered. Everything else kind of doesn't matter as much. So like this. And then here I'm gonna line up so that he is as symmetrical as possible. So I'm gonna look at the legs here, try to line those up. That looks pretty good. The head looks almost symmetrical.
Okay, that's good enough. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. We can fix that. So just make sure you don't line it up. Uh, you don't move it like in any other direction because that will mess up your lineup. Okay, so now that they're both lined up, I'm gonna select both of them, group them, and call this group image planes, like that. And then make a new layer and call this image planes, image plane layer, like that. And then set this to R. That way I can't select it unless I turn this R off. And that way I can work in here and it's completely uh, not in the way. So now from the front view, I'm gonna make a cube and the first thing we'll do is build up a torso. That, we can press this button so we can see through it. You wanna add uh, four divisions in height and then in width we'll add two. And the reason we want two here is because this on the bottom here will be the legs and then we need a center output for the neck and if you have a line down the middle it's you won't be able to make a neck uh, so uh, also I want to work in symmetry so select uh, vertex hold control shift right click symmetry and turn symmetry on and you can leave it on object or world it doesn't matter we can't do the apology yet because we don't have a center line and that's okay and now we just need to line up this to where we think the torso is so like this is the armpit right here and this is the like edge of the shoulder, this is the neck. And then we do the crotch right here, drop this down. And then this, uh, some people like to place their geometry this way. I don't like it because I find it doesn't move properly. So I just do this. I place it like at a 45 degree angle like that. And then we just space everything out. Things should be more or less evenly spaced out. All right, so the side here also assume that clothes are slightly thicker so you have to go in a little bit and this will be our, the chest drops down like that do this and it's okay if this is a little long that's going to be fine later okay uh, now from the side view uh, we need to first make it easier for us to see the side so if you just move these in because your torso is round it's not square so we do this and then from the side view we can then see um, what we need to work with so this part here this is going to be the arm uh, where the arm comes out so if we delete a hole that's going to be the hole for the arm and this will be for the legs and then this will be for the neck but in the meantime uh, we just want to move them around like this and I'm going to start lining up where the armhole is. And in this uh, character sheet, we can see pretty easily where that is. It's right there. And you just kind of box it out. Here's the back, place that there. This is the neck. So we place this where the neck is gonna go, the chest, that, and then just line this up. This is kind of hard to figure out where things are supposed to go. So it's okay if you don't get it right, because we can fix that later. And then, this just comes in like that. Bring this out. Here's the back. If you can press three, you'll see like a little bean and we can just try and adjust this little bean here. Try and match closer to our reference. He's really exaggerated, so it's gonna look weird in the beginning, but this is kind of what we're looking at here. It's out a little bit. So you get a shape like that. And it's already starting to look like a torso, but we need to do a little more work on it. So first, we're gonna pull out the neck. That's the easiest part. Also, we need to adjust uh, in this view as well, because what we were doing, we were adjusting in the side view and we were messing up our initial um, layout from the front. So I'm just gonna adjust here. And this will be adjusted again afterwards. So this is gonna be the neck, click extrude, and then pull up the neck, and then delete. So now we just have these vertices here. We can line those up and place those. Uh, I can go a little bit into the jaw and I want the back where the back of the head will meet uh, the neck. And then here as well, we'll just line this up. And then adjust just to match that neck profile. Shoulders come up a little, get a little out. 
Okay. And it looks crazy uh, when it's uh, like this, but when it's in blocking mode, but it's okay. Now I'm gonna just adjust this a little bit. This back's a little weird here, but it's okay. All right, let's do the arms. So we'll just pull out the arms. And this kind of is really important. I wanna make sure that I'm making a square because if you smooth a square, it turn, it's gonna turn into a uh, circle. If you smooth a rectangle or a rhombus, it's gonna be all skewed. So I'm going to try and get it as close uh, as possible to a square. So you can see this is all messed up. We can look from the side view here and just make square like that and then you want to make sure that the square is actually a square not a rectangle and just line them up so that more or less this is an even square like that that looks good now I can extrude again and this will be the wrist and because it's already a square all we need to do is scale it okay that looks pretty good now from the side view uh, we don't have a side view of the arms, and that's okay. We're just going to take the elbow, push it back a little bit, and then this face here, we're gonna rotate so that it faces in the direction of the arm, like that. We can place the arm like here. You always wanna have a little bit of a bend. So here's another option that we can do. Uh, usually if your hands are uh, flat, to the body like this that means your uh, wrist is rotated because when you unrotate your wrist it's going to be flat to your elbow and they will point uh, like palms forward but because we're uh, the palms are pointing towards the body we just need to rotate this 90 degrees like this and this is an optional thing it's not really necessary but i like to do it because it adds just a little more realism it does make it a little harder to work with but we can fix that uh, afterwards, I'll show you uh, what I mean when we get to the forearms, but like this just think of the two bones inside your arm Okay, now let's do the legs Same thing we're gonna extrude the legs and then we need to make a, a square So I'm not snapping. I'm just lining them up because if I snap they'll snap in space completely and they'll just be one point So the knees are right here So bulge here like that then from the side we do have legs from the side so that's easier to line up then I'm gonna go from the bottom here to figure out what the square looks like so now that's a square shade it like this in the direction of the knee Put this way okay good now extrude again rotate and scale this one out so the drawing doesn't match exactly the front and side and that's okay All right so we get this now of course uh, it looks completely bonkers right now so we'll just fix that delete those faces there clear history and uh, freeze it just so that it's uh, we don't ac accidentally move it now I'm gonna save it I have a uh, version over there so I'm gonna start at version 1.1 like that it's just gonna be easier for me to version up okay so now we need to add more detail to the arms and to the legs. And uh, one thing, one way to think about this is that we want our faces to more or less be square. And some of these are not, but it'll fix up later. But the arms definitely are issues. So I'm gonna double click uh, the insert edge loop, uh, loop tool. And then I'm gonna set it to multiple, set it to two. And I'm gonna drop it over here on the legs and arms. And now from the front view, we can adjust the legs.
right now, uh, there's nothing else to do. Because at this point, we've uh, exhausted all of the things we can do to this shape. Because if I start adding loops now, uh, it's I'm actually going to ruin this. So let me show you. If I press three on this and then start adding uh, loops, let's say I want to add more detail here, uh, it's going to start making flat areas. And those are really hard to fix. So instead, we're just going to subdivide. You take this here. If you want to keep this version in case you want to uh, use it for something else or you want to be able to go back, you can group it and then call this reference. reference. And you can duplicate it, take it out of the group and this group just stays hidden. So I have reference in there. And I can subdivide and I'll get this. Now I can take this version and then use the vertices that I have here to add more detail. So the next thing is we need to fix the armpit. Now here's the problem. Right now, the, the way this is set up, we have this high balance point or point with more than four vertices, uh, four, four edges in the armpit. And this is gonna cause issues. So one thing we can do is we can get rid of that. And the way we can do it is we can just move it from here to here. And the way you do that is really simple. Um, basically, you just need to take this, make a connection here like that, and do the same on the other side. Here, we'll do it to the back there. You then want to delete the two edges that are connecting to that high balance point. Okay, so now it's this point only has four edges. But we have these five sided we need to fix and that's an easy fix. Open up the insert edge loop tool, set it to relative, make sure insert with edge flow is on and autocomplete is on. And then just drop a loop here and here. And then just reconnect like that. That's it. Now our loops are much better because the one from here goes all the way around and same here. And we get a nicer edge flow here in the armpit and we have a little more geometry to uh, define that armpit. Okay, we can pull this out to make the shoulder a little beefier. Uh, the butt is a little harder to kind of visualize how to make a butt from the geometry that we have here, but it's actually not too bad. All we need to do is use this edge loop as the the fold, right, for the cheeks right here. And then this will, uh, these points here will create uh, like the little round shape here. So we just bring this in that and this out you can see it's already starting to work all right that's good enough for now and uh, the body's ready uh, the next thing to do here is to save this version because what we're gonna do uh, later is work on the head. The hands and the feet will need more detail. So this version here is, we basically um, can't do any more to this geometry here. So I'm gonna duplicate it, take this one, put it in here, and this version I'm going to subdivide because this is gonna be the version we'll be using. Alright guys, so in the next video, uh, we'll work on the feet, hands, and head. We'll see how much we can get to, probably just the feet and hands in the next video. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Please hit the like button and uh, leave a comment if you want to see anything else. And I'll see you guys next time.